tiny ones. I still have it, by the way. I came back, and after the tape was played at Third Air Force, and I played it for Squadron Leader Moreland and several other people, Ted Conrad, my boss, then said, make me a copy. So I made him a copy. He put it in the desk drawer, in his desk drawer. He moved on and was replaced. And the gentleman that replaced him thought it was hilarious to play the tape. I didn't know this at the time at cocktail parties. So he was playing a copy. A copy of that copy somehow or other got to a gentleman by the name of Harry Harris, a British uh, banister or a lawyer. Harry was an uh, amateur ufologist. He and a guy by the name of Mac si uh, Mac Sa Mike Sachs. I traced this down years later. And a couple of ladies named Brenda Butler, Dot Street, and Jenny Randalls, who were writing a book at that time, all got involved, and my tape got out into the public domain, a copy of my tape. What's on the Internet now is probably a fifth, sixth, or seventh generation, but it's out there. So does that answer your question? Thank you. Let me interject that Robert Jameson, the missile targeting officer from Malmstrom in 67, does need to catch a plane, and so if anyone wants to direct a question to him, you'll need to do it in the near term here. Hi, Ledge King with Gannett, Washington Bureau. I have a, three questions, two of which can be answered by raising a, a hand. Uh, the first is, have any of you been contacted uh, in the last month, I guess, whenever this event was being planned, by a government official telling you not to show up or trying to dissuade you? Any of them? Any of you? No. Second question is, um, Mr. Hastings alludes to the fact that there's a message being sent here that we ought to get rid of nukes. How many of you subscribe to that theory? That, 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 the theory that, that you support getting rid of nukes, first of all. I, I don't think he said that. Well, that what, 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 what you're being asked is Bob and I are of the opinion that the, the, the bottom line is the best explanation for what has taken place at our nuclear weapon sites is that whoever are in the UFOs are in effect sending a message, perhaps getting rid of nukes, expressing displeasure or concern, but certainly uh, indi indicating an interference with the weapons. You're being asked whether you subscribe to that or not. not Do you support? Not quite, not quite that, to no. that degree. I, I think they're modernists. Do all of you support getting rid of nuclear weapons? Show of hands. Okay. Uh, can I just add? Sure. Um, uh, with regard to uh, there, the, the reason I came to the conclusion that the, this was a message was simply, again, um, they could have done a lot more destruction, I think, uh, to our weapon systems, and they didn't. Uh, it was simply uh, shining a light on our nuclear weapons, and literally, literally shining a light on, on, on nuclear facilities. Uh, this has happened all over the world. I can, I can point to other instances where UFOs came over, shown a beam down on the weapons storage area where nukes were, were stored. Uh, to me, it's pretty clear. This is just, you know, we're, we're shining a light on this. We're pointing it out. Uh, what are you people doing with nuclear weapons? And my final question, uh, which does require somebody to speak, <laughs> uh, is, you know, you've talked about how society and the, and the mainstream media sort of are very dismissive of all this. Can one or two of you talk about sort of the personal journey you've come to in terms of, um, you know, approaching family or friends or others about this uh, when people may think it's kooky to talk about this. Can one or two of you talk about how, you know, how, was it difficult? How difficult was it? Um, that sort of thing. Thank you. Well, as a person who is very, very skeptical about this, what I call UFO nonsense, uh, when that happened that night and I thought through the process of what the logical explanations are, after that, I was very careful about who I told what, because some of my friends, when I started on this, just laughed. Uh, so I got ridiculed. I, you know, I was used to the ridicule from the Air Force, except for the, the dual standard. We're going to ridicule, but it's secret and don't talk about. And, and coming out was, was my... I came out a little bit. I, I talked to Robert. I gave him a little bit of the story. I didn't want my name to come out. I was concerned. I don't want to be considered a kook. I don't want to, you know, because I consider not so many anymore, but I consider some of the extremists a bit kooky. But I think it's more 
important that we come out and tell our story rationally and see that we aren't kooks and this is what happened and make your own judgment but I am one of my concerns is that you all think I'm a kook and I'm old enough that I don't really care that much because <laughs> it happened so is that okay how old are you 68 uh, going on 95 <laughs> I would briefly add to that that uh, I made a decision decades ago that no matter who laughed at me or threw things at me, I would speak what I knew to be the facts. Uh, the world is filled with self-appointed UFO experts, uh, persons who have all the answers even though they've studied none of the facts. The scientific community is chock full of those folks. Journalism, frankly, is chock full of those folks. Uh, we're presenting credible witnesses for open minds, people who have an objective sense of their duty to inform the American public about the reality of the situation. We're providing you not only these witnesses, but many other witnesses who can testify as to the reality of all of this, and you may draw your own conclusions. I'm Lisa Fan from Epoch Times newspaper. Uh, my question is towards uh, uh, Mr. Arnison. Uh, you mentioned someone over there trying to send us a message. I wonder what kind of a message uh, do those aliens consider our Earth people uh, have a threat to them or they just try to uh, defend or they try to come here to occupy, take over Earth? What kind of a message do you think? If I knew that answer, I wouldn't be here. I really don't know. <clears throat> but they're, they're trying to tell us something without a, without a question, whether it's don't go much further, you could get rid of the things. I don't have any idea. Are they from the extraterrestrial? Who knows? Are they from other dimensions? Who knows? Are they from underneath the earth? Who knows? Your guess is as good as mine, and I can't answer that question. Anything else? Um, the government are trying to uh, conceal this uh, information, the, the fact, actually, for, many, for all those years. Do you think this will do good for the society's stability or is it kind of a, a prevent for some uh, advance or further research uh, for our society? No, no, that's a, that's a big one. We have been lied to for so many decades about the truth of the matter and I think we need to have more openness in society as far as what these things are. Recently, in the last year or two, the Catholic Church has said publicly, you know, it's okay, ETs can exist. There are brothers, and they are theologically saying it's okay to believe in extraterrestrials. And if the Catholic Church says it, it's got to have a big stick, I would think, as far as the Western world is concerned, anyhow. Do you think right now it's a time for human beings to admit there are other spiritual beings in the universe besides the human race. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I think that's so. Um, the thing is, people are so wrapped up nowadays in their own world. They're worried about jobs. They're worried about mortgages. They could care less about UFOs and ETs and paranormal events and whatnot. That isn't even on their radar scope. Unfortunately, but that's... I understand that. I haven't spoken to college students that much myself, but I understand that that is a fact. Yeah. And that's healthy. I think that's goodness. Oh, yeah. I just wonder, I just wonder what's in the archives in uh, the Vatican as far as UFOs and things like that are concerned. If that could be released, wow, I bet it would blow the socks off a lot of people. That would be interesting. Okay. <laughs> let, sir. let me, let me, you, you, you asked what would the potential changes be for society, would this be good? Let me briefly summarize and say, um, in 1975, a former CIA official, Victor Marchetti, wrote a best-selling book called The CIA and Cult of Intelligence. Uh, the CIA took him to the Supreme Court to attempt to public, uh, block publication of that book. 
ultimately a redacted version of it was released. It was the first book in American history to be censored by the U.S. government. The same Victor Marchetti in 1979 wrote an article for uh, Second Look magazine. Uh, the title, I believe, was How the CIA Views the UFO Phenomenon. He said, among other things, this subject was so sensitive that you did not talk about it in the agency unless you had a need to. Nevertheless, there were rumors floating around at the highest levels of CIA about recovered crashed UFOs and the bodies of their crews. Thirdly, Victor Marchetti said, in his opinion as an intelligence analyst with CIA for I think 11 years, he was of the opinion that no government on earth will voluntarily release this information because it would jeopardize the status quo, i.e. their power. Uh, even if there's no hostile intent or implication to the visitation of these beings, if indeed these are extraterrestrials, even if they're not uh, meaning us any harm whatsoever, governments have nothing to gain and everything to lose by admitting the reality of this. And Victor Marchetti's opinion is that this will probably come out, you know, by some action on the part of the phenomenon, it's, phenomenon itself, which will leave no doubt in anyone's mind. But don't expect Washington or Moscow or any other uh, government uh, to, to volunteer all the reality of all of this. Thank you. I'm Jim Kenney, and I'm a defense writer of long standing in this town for <clears throat> Gannett Newspapers, Business Week magazine, and I was senior editor of Air Force Magazine. I'm going to ask a question, but I want to contribute something. When I was on Air Force Magazine, I was told by an Air Force colonel of long acquaintance that this was real and that we were actually dealing with the aliens. I never had the guts to write. He said, you won't have the guts to write this. I said, no, because I have to confirm it. And you, if you can't tell me how to confirm it, he did give me a couple names, but it didn't pan out. I was like all the rest of the press, you know, I didn't have, I, if I couldn't confirm it, I wouldn't write it. Now, that may mean that we're somewhat cowardly, but at the same time, it means that we're also very careful. I do sympathize with the members of the press who do not write about this, even though I myself am convinced of it by now, because I was one of them once. But now, I have a question contemporary. Uh, two years ago, the Air Force Chief of Staff and the Secretary of the Air Force were dismissed by the Secretary of Defense for, among other reasons, being sloppy in their management of nuclear weapons. We transported an armed one somewhere. We sent components overseas and so forth. This shook up the Air Force. I want to ask you gentlemen in the aggregate or individually, do you think that this evidence of malfeasance ranks up there with not telling the public about alien or UFO intrusion at nuclear sites? Is there is there an equation there? I don't know about ranking, but uh, it points out the dangers of nuclear weapons. The fact that uh, uh, these accidents have occurred, uh, serious accidents with, with nuclear weapons, and uh, and uh, it's it's just. It just points out how dangerous it is that we have them. Uh, I don't know how, how to compare that with the cover-up. I would have done an analysis of the cover-up, and I'd be glad to give it to any of you guys that are interested. Uh, I th I, but I, I think it, it's, it's related in the fact that uh, the cover-up of, of the fact that the UFOs did intercede with our nuclear weapons is, is extremely important. May I add something? 